Good morning. We missed you. We did. We did. We had a great break. Thank you for coming back. My name is Michael. I'm one of the pastors here. If you don't know who this guy is saying he misses you up here, <laughs> this is Pastor Suzanne. We're glad you're here. We're, here. we're the pastors of Heritage Church. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here on this very special day. Actually, if you don't mind, let us know you were here. Take this announcement sheet you were handed at the door. The part called the connection card tears off. So let's tear it off on three. One, two, three. Go. Now, fill it out. Let us know you're here. Put your last name, first name, and family members here today. Any information you're comfortable sharing. We don't misuse it or anything. And at the end of the service, we're going to talk about the next steps on the back. You put any information you want on there, and you can put it in the offering bucket on the way out the door. If you're our guest here this morning, we welcome you. We know you have many choices and places to worship, so it's a gift to have you here with us this morning. Make sure you sign up on that connection card Michael mentioned. We'd love to send you a sweet treat from us to you. We also want you to know that if after sitting through Heritage Service, this isn't the church for you, let us know. We'd love to help you find a place where you can connect to God and grow in your faith. Each and every month, we do one thing to serve our community, and this this month, our one thing is Ice Pops for the Harvest Youth Club. They are an organization that serves low-income children through the summer by providing summer care for them, and we are their we are their ice pop dealer. Yeah. And so, so, so we just collect tons of those during the month of May, and we give them, and they use them all summer for the kids. And what kid doesn't love one of those? You know, those cheapo ones with the cool liquid colors in them. Um, today is Confirmation Sunday. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Graduation Sunday is on the 19th. And if you've got someone graduating from whether they're graduating from preschool, kindergarten, fifth grade, eighth grade, high school, college, we take them all. We do a big celebration and just celebrate everyone who's graduating. So we need a photo for that um, as soon as possible. And then your serving opportunity, as Michael mentioned, we have our, your VBS flyer in there. It takes a lot of volunteers to make VBS happen. So if you could help us with that as well that would be wonderful and so this morning we are we do we are going to be celebrating confirmation and confirmation is a time when young people claim the faith of Jesus Christ for themselves they claim the name Christian for themselves and um, we are going to watch a video now which has kind of their thoughts related to being confirmed this morning I think you'll find it quite powerful Dear God. 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 Hi, my name is Daniel Bofiori, and this is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed so I can build a stronger relationship with you. My hope for the future is to have more of a bond with you so I can build myself up as a better person. Hi, my name is Haley Bofiori, and this is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed so I can strengthen my relationship with you. My hopes for my future with you is to trust in you more and to be able to follow my path that you have set for me with less worry. Hi, my name is Avery Elliott and this is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed because I feel that to be accepted I have to repay and to make myself think that I'm accepted and saying yes is my way of that. My hopes for the future with God are to serve so that I can feel hope. Hi, my name's Annie Maya. This is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed because I want to be closer to you and I want you to love me. I want my new beginning to be a clean slate. Being united with you would be such a blessing as I have you to guide me through my life from now on. My hopes for my future is to be able to feel connected to you and better my relationship with you as I have said yes to you. Hi, my name is Crystal McClinton and this is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to, I want to be confirmed because I love you and I worship you. My hope for the future are for me and my family to be at our best and just have a great future. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bella Nelson, and this is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed because I want to know you. I want you to love and care for me. My hopes for my future with you are to be with you in heaven and to always worship with you and to praise with people who believe the same way I do. Hi, my name is Caitlin Nelson, and this is my letter to God. 
Dear God, I want to be confirmed because I want to take control of my faith and become a better servant to you. My hopes for my future with God are that I will be able to help in the church to serve you and become a better Christian overall. I hope that you will continue to mold and shape me in my life. Sincerely, Caitlin Nelson. Hi, my name is Melly Santana and this is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed because I want to have a closer relationship. I didn't always have the best relationship with him growing up, but now I hope I can continue growing in my faith and build such a better connection. Hi, my name is Kaylin Troutman and this is my letter to God. First, I want to be confirmed because I love Jesus. My hopes are for the future is that I will always serve you and you will always be there for me. Hi, my name is Erin Troutman. This is my letter to God. Dear God, I want to be confirmed because I want to be closer with my church family and closer to you. I hope for the future I can use my knowledge and understanding to take care of your creation. Now, y'all know if we had asked them to stand up here and tell you those things, that would not have gone as well, am I right? <laughs> just like many adults, a lot a of us job. don't like you guys did a wonderful job, and their letters just touched my heart so much. It is a beautiful thing to consider the fact that every person you meet is on their own faith journey. And that God is at work in the lives of people in ways we cannot imagine. So thank you for caring about kids and letting us be a church that invest in these incredible young people. Now it's time for your quiz. Are you ready? So they learned a few things, and, and um, they're going to answer some questions for me. And so um, confirmation is the time when we make our faith what? I want to hear you. So do they. We take on the name. Christian. We believe in the Trinity. The Father, Son. The, we claim grace, prevenient grace, which is the grace that comes. Before. Justifying grace is the grace when we say yes. yes to Jesus. And sanctifying grace is how we what? With our faith. We claim Jesus as our what? Savior. Savior. And so this morning we have a couple that we are going to baptize prior to confirming them. When you are confirmed, you claim the name of Jesus. Some people have already been baptized. And if you've already been baptized, we're not going to rebaptize you because God already did his work in your life when you were a baby. But we will confirm you with um, some oil and put that on for those who are. But we have two that are coming forward for baptisms. We have a couple more who are going to get baptized at a later date because a grandmother couldn't be here. And we're not going to let grandma miss their baby's baptism, no. are we? We're just not going to do that, okay? We can do Is that. We, 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 can, we can make this happen. And um, we do have a few that are sick that you may see come up next week um, and out of town that will be here next week as far. So Daniel and Haley, if you'll come stand right here. You can leave your papers there. Yeah, you can go right there. That'll be fine. Daniel, right there. All throughout history, we have celebrated our commitment to Jesus Christ through the sacrament of baptism. And through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's mighty work of salvation and given new birth through the water and the spirit. And all this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so today, Haley and Daniel, who are very near and dear to our hearts, and such an important part of our youth group, and it is a joy to watch you to grow in your faith and just grow into be amazing human beings. And today they've come to say yes to Jesus through baptism. Let's pray over the water. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these waters of baptism, the symbol of the Holy Spirit poured out on us and over us to cleanse us, to make us holy, to make us into your vessels of love. We pray your blessing and your Holy Spirit descend upon these children. We're not going to put all this on you. <laughs> really? Want to ask the questions? We have some questions right. for you. Go ahead and put the questions up. We'll do that for Daniel and Haley. On behalf of the whole church, that was it. On behalf of the whole church, do you accept the salvation offered by Jesus Christ and become children of God in your own right? Yes, I do. Do you willingly turn from your sins and commit your life to obedience and service to God? I do. 
you accept the Holy Spirit into your hearts. All right. All right. We'll do Haley first or Daniel? Daniel's going to do this. Daniel. Let's do Daniel. Daniel. We baptize, baptize you in the name of the, of the Father, Father and of the, the Son and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Haley. Haley. We baptize Touch you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Would y'all give them a round of applause? Did you know how quickly they went back to their seats? Did you know that? You know, uh, Scripture tells us that when someone says yes to Jesus and comes into the kingdom of God, that the angels rejoice. And so in heaven today, they are throwing a block party. Now we need you all to stand because everybody stand. You can just, uh, Aaron, if you'll go right there on the end there. Here you go. You and Annie switch places. I don't think it really matters, but okay. okay. Yeah, 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 it's okay. Yeah, yeah. You are a little baby in the middle. We put you in the center so we can see you, Annie. It's okay. All right. So we're going to come by and we're going to confirm each of them. And they need oh, to answer uh, the questions first. Oh, yes. Where are their questions? Go ahead and put the questions. There we go. Not, no, go back through the same questions. It'd be fine. There, no? Okay. All right. For all of you. And you've already answered that, so you're fine. Do you willingly turn from your sins and commit your life to obedience and service to God? Go back one? Oh, we missed the first one. Go to the first question. Do you accept the salvation offered by Jesus Christ and become children of God in your own right? I do. And finally, do you accept the Holy Spirit into your hearts? I do. All right. Now, oil is used in Scripture, and you often see oil used to um, help bring healing to the sick. But you also see oil used in scripture for people when they are set apart for God's purposes. So as you come to make your faith firm today, you are setting your lives apart to make a difference in this world. But you don't do it by yourself. You do it through Jesus Christ and him being in your heart. So we'll start with Daniel. Daniel, we confirm you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Haley, we confirm you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Crystal, we confirm you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Annie, we confirm you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Melly, we confirm you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kaylin, we confirm you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Aaron, we confirm you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the fun part about our faith. We are never to do it alone. Mm-hmm. It isn't just us and Jesus. It's, it's all of us in Jesus. The church is to surround each and every disciple in it. These young people have said that their faith is firm now. This, they're owning it themselves, but they don't do it alone. We help carry each other in this. And so what I want you guys to know is this isn't a, you don't, it's not a solo journey, okay? The whole church is here to help you and support you throughout your whole life and your faith journey. And so always, always come back and feel the, the support of the church around you as we do this. So that said, why don't you turn around just real quick, look at him. It's so embarrassing. Turn around. We want you to smile because they've got a picture. See the camera back there? All you're doing. Y'all do selfies all the time. Come on now. Okay. <laughs> all right. You have a vow to make to them. It's not just them making vows today. So if you put that up. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? They're no longer your sons and daughters. They're your brothers and sisters. Mm. Will you? Yes. yes. Okay, you guys can turn back around. You can so you turn don't around. Have to, could be there you okay. So we have something for you, and we hope that this will be something that you'll throw in a drawer and you'll keep it for a long, long time. These are specially crafted crosses, and they're designed to fit human hands. And I have one that sits on my desk, and see how naturally it just fits? And it was molded by another human being to remind us that we are always all connected to one another. And this one has the symbol of the dove. And as you remember, we said the dove is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is now alive in you. And so you all have one of these today to forever remind you of the day that you were confirmed. Would you all give them a round of applause as they head back to their seats? Uh-huh. 
You know, Michael and I really um, enjoy youth ministry, and I taught eighth grade for years, and um, it is a beautiful thing and a privilege to be a part of young people's journey. And so thank you to the parents and people who love these young people for letting us just have a small sliver of their lives and just let, let, to let you know that they just bring joy to all of us. They all have a servant's heart. And what a beautiful thing it is. You know how you hear people down talk young people? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't do it. There's power in these young people. I feel good knowing that the next generation will be them ra being raised up as Christian leaders. Some of the in most faithful midst. disciples in the church. That's right, our young people. So we're so grateful for all of you. And never forget that Michael and I love you all. You are so special to all of us. Okay. Stop. Stop. You I know. Preach. All right. So we are kicking off a new message series this morning. And, you know, this is a message series that I think is important for all of you to hear this morning. We talked a little bit about should we change our sermon for today? And then we thought, no, we really shouldn't change what God had given us to prepare, which we prepared before we went to New York. But we think it's important to talk about these things in front of you. And sometimes young people are sleeping in and they miss a Sunday service or whatever. And we thought this might be an important thing for y'all to consider because y'all have taught us a lot about this topic. Yeah, you guys have talked about it in you, front of us. You've, you've taught us a lot about this, this subject. So we start kicking off a series in May. It's entitled Mental Health Matters. I mean, there are a lot of things when we talk about our mental health, isn't there? And there's no better month to do this. Did you know that May is Mental Health Awareness Month? Maybe you've seen something on Facebook, those kind of things. But mental illness is a reality in the world in which we live in. And none of us are untouched. It might be a family member. It might be a friend. It might be a co-worker. It might be a neighbor. It might be even be you. And there's any wonder that you know, we're all touched by this when one in five people will receive some sort of mental health diagnosis in their lifetime. Maybe it's a stress-induced anxiety. Maybe it's a more serious mental health condition. But mental health is a reality in the world around us. Now, as we grow up, we're taught a lot about our physical health, right? When you go to classes and all that, they talk about, you know, you need to eat the food pyramid and you need to get your exercise. You need to do all this. But we don't talk about mental health as much as we should. But we are spiritual beings. We have a mind, we have a body, and we have a spirit. And all of that matters. And your mental health really, really matters. Because when we are experiencing mental health symptoms, it affects our lives. It affects the way that we navigate through life. It affects our moods. It affects our behaviors. It affects the decisions that we make. And here's the truth. Anyone can struggle with their mental health. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter what country you were born in. It doesn't matter how you were raised at some, raised at some point in your life. Anyone can struggle. But as Christians, how we talk about mental health matters. Because the truth we want you to get as we go through this series is this. And uh, kids, I hope you get this as well. Your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Now, we have a tendency in church sometimes, and maybe some of you have experienced this. Maybe you were having a mental health struggle, or maybe somebody in your family was. We kind of try, we can sometimes try to spiritualize it away. Someone's going through something, we'll be like, well, God's just given you a test, so God can give you a testimony. You ever heard that one? Or maybe, how about this? What if you just prayed a little more? You need to pray more. You'll feel chipper again, right? <laughs> or how about this one? What if you just trusted God more? You just, need to, you just need to trust God. And worst of all, worst of all, is there any kind of inference to another person that the reason they're struggling with their mental health is because there must be some sin in your life? Mm. That damages other people, and I think it damages us. I think it damages our witness because all that kind of those kind of statements, all they do is fuel shame. And people cannot be healthy in the midst of shame. They feel like it's a personal weakness. They feel like something's wrong with them. Um, have any of you ever known anybody who had diabetes? Do we ever say to them, "Well, God gave you diabetes so you can have a testimony"? No. Do we say to them, well, if you just pray more, your A1C score will be a little better? Do we tell them that? Well, if you just trust God a little bit more, 
Oh, man, you got diabetes. What sin you got going on? We would never think of saying that. Just because wow. someone is struggling with their mental health, they're not a bad person. And that kind of stigma is a, and that kind of shame is a problem because what it does is it forces people to withdraw from the world around us and they don't ask for help. And there is always help available. They feel like they're not worthy. They feel like something's wrong with them. And so in this series, it is our hope to talk about how, as Jesus followers, how do we approach mental health? How can we approach mental health and still remain faithful followers of Jesus Christ? Because the truth is, our mental health, and don't y'all forget this, our mental health matters. You know, I mean, mental health is a universal issue, okay? We are all, we go through some struggles. Even if it's just for you, it's temporary. You're going to go through some struggles in your life. If you haven't, bless your heart. It's coming, all right? It's going to hit you. At some point, you're going to be down. At some point, you're going to struggle. At some point, you're not going to be able to get those thoughts under control. At some point in your life, it hits almost everybody. Some people have better coping skills with it, and some people, man, the chemistry just goes haywire, and you can't deal with it, right? Because it's not just a physical, not just a mental problem. It's not just an emotional problem. It's the whole thing. It's a package deal, and it will affect both hands. It's a both hand, right? You know, um, it's part of the human experience, and I think we just need to be honest about that. And the one thing I love about the Bible is it doesn't skimp on humanity, right? You get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly, the hurt. You get to see the glorious, but humanity is there. It wasn't just written to impress. It was written to explain and explore. Okay, so one of the, the, my favorite characters in the Bible, and I just think there's so many layers of this guy, there, you could study him for a long time. One of my favorite characters is King David. And he's a, he's, Jesus was his direct descendant, right? Part of the prophecies is that Jesus would come from the line of King David. And so you think King David was amazing, and he was amazing, right? He was an amazing human being, but he struggled. He had a lot of struggles. He had a lot of emotional, mental struggles, and he wrote about them in the Bible. He wrote the Psalms. He wrote songs about it. It was his therapy to write it out and get it off his chest, right? He did that. King David had a lot going on. And there's some scripture here. It's from Psalm 31. We just selected some verses from it. You can read the whole thing. Listen to what he says. He says, be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. See if this, any of this hits home for you. My soul and body with grief my life is consumed by anguish. Feeling it? Consumed by anguish. And my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction. And my bones grow weak. It's not just emotional, it's physical. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. <laughs> Felt that, haven't you? And yet, you heard my cry for mercy when I called out to you for help. David knew suffering. He knew pain. He caused suffering and pain in his life. He was dealing with it the best he knew how in his time. And he called out to God, right? It's kind of natural when you're hurting, right? Call out to God, God, please help, right? You know, 911, right? I, I need some help because mental health issues are universal. It affects everyone. I don't care how amazing you are. You can get hit with this. That's why he wrote a lot of the Psalms. It's there, you know? It's, it's there, to, and, he's, and he's struggling with it out loud for all of us thousands of years later. The problem is, is that when we have a spiritual life, it can kind of layer on top of that. And we're praying to God, and if we don't get the answer or the fix immediately, sometimes we just come up with explanations of why this isn't happening, right? These myths, these mental health myths that we come up with. And the biggest one, and I think it affects all the rest of them, is that mental health, poor mental health is a sign of a weak faith. I think we think that sometimes. That some, and, and sometimes because my, my faith is weak, we think God won't care about me. Like it's a performance-based thing. Like somehow I have to have enough faith before God can care about me. And then the second myth, and this one comes off of the first, is that if we seek help for our mental health in any way, shape, or form through therapy or medicine or counseling, that that means that we don't trust God. 
that we doubt God's ability to deal with this. That somehow seeking help is admitting that, right? And then the third one, and I think this is, this is because the first two were believed deeply by the church. The third one is that the church somehow won't understand my mental health needs. That I fear being judged, understood, or accepted. And unfortunately, that myth sometimes is true because the church hasn't understood historically. And we all play this game where like everything's all right and everything's fine. And we all have to put this face on when you come to church. And the church should be exactly opposite of that. Just come as you are and let us wrap our arms around you and love you and accept you no matter what's going on. It's because the church believed that, that, that we, we fear that. We fear not being accepted, right? And, and the last myth is that God won't heal me unless I'm a better Christian. That somehow, if I, if I perform well enough, God will take this burden away. And somehow, I think none of those are true. They're just not true. God doesn't work that way. His church should not work that way. That might be true in a lot of churches where you are feared or not accepted. Not this church. This church will always open its arms to you. We will wrap our arms around you and accept you and love you just like here because we are the physical manifestation of an invisible God. We are here to do that. Here's what I want to say about all these myths. If you believe our core belief that God is love, then that automatically dispels all of those myths. God is love. It's the one belief you've got to get into your head and into your heart so that all of the rest of that just goes away and you fall into God's arms because God is love and it will dispel every myth. To God, our mental health matters. I think we need to learn to practice something I refer to as mental health hospitality. <laughs> you know, in the church world, there are a lot of books written about how a church can be hospitable. And you, and you know, when someone comes in to make them feel like they're a part of things, to welcome people in, to let them know that they're not alone and that they are part of a family. And y'all know what hospitality looks like in your own home. I mean, if you're having people over to your home, you're attentive to their needs, you're kind to them, and you're welcoming. But a lot of times, people who are struggling with mental health, and even the families of those who are struggling with mental health, they are not met with hospitality. They're met, or a lot of times, it's almost like we feel like maybe it's contagious. And so we can be a little aloof. We can be disrespectful sometimes to what's going on with them, and we can even be cold. And in the church, sometimes we try to, we just kind of, you know, blow it away. We have little expressions, like y'all seen, we have little t-shirts with crosses on, say things like this, I'm too blessed to be depressed, right? <laughs> Those attitudes are not helpful. You know, one of the things that happened in the pandemic that I am so appreciative of, that I think was a gift during the midst of the pandemic, was during the pandemic, we kind of woke up to the fact that mental health is important in our country. I mean... Thank God for that. I mean, it is so important that we talk about our mental health now more. Now, I can tell you that the best example that I can share with you about how to talk about and embody and think about mental health is our young people. I get to sit with these young people, and they will say things in phrases like this to me. They will say, I'm not doing so well in my mental health. Y'all, in my entire life growing up, you know what I was told? Suck it up, buttercup, right? Yeah. Right? That's what we were told. But yeah. I love it. You guys, I love it. Don't ever stop. If something's going on with your mental health, don't stop. Tell somebody. Tell your parents. Tell a counselor. If no one listens, keep talking until someone hears you because our mental health matters. And see, this is something the church should be leaning into. Because we're all broken in one way, shape, or form. We need to be intentional about it. We need to support people. We need to talk about mental health. And we need to refer people. Hmm. You see, if we're not part of the solution, then maybe, just maybe, we're part of the problem. And that's not what we're called to be. In Scripture, we're told how we are to be with one another. And I think this just is a verse that shows us how we should be hospitable when it comes to people or families that are struggling with mental health. It says this. It says, share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. You see, at church, we should create a safe place. Know this. In our church, it's okay to not be okay. It is okay to not be okay. 
We need to be authentic with one another. We need to be vulnerable with one another. We need to share our struggles. Church should be a shame-free zone. I mean, we can understand the complexities of this, but we also have to have compassion. We can share other people's burdens. You know, uh, I had a situation in my life one time where I couldn't carry it. It was too heavy. I couldn't carry the burden myself. You know what the beautiful thing was? People in the church carried the burden for me. And that's what we're called to do, to care and share and help others. And then the Bible says we can comfort others with the comfort we have received ourselves. And so we encourage other people. We pray for other people. We can do tangible things for people. Sometimes when someone's really down, the nicest thing you can do is send them some cookies. Take them a meal. Offer to scrub their toilet. I totally would scrub your toilet for you if you need it. I promise you. I totally would do it. She would. You see... Here's what we need to know. God's not calling any of us to be mental health experts. There are professionals who are trained to be mental health experts. And don't you ever, ever let shame or stigma stop you from getting help if you need help. Don't ever do that. We're not called to be mental health experts, but we are called to create a safe place. A safe place for people who struggle with their mental health. A safe place for people whose family members are struggling with mental health. A safe place where your friends who are struggling with their mental health mm -hmm. can get help. If you think about Jesus, and man, don't we love Jesus. Jesus always, always in every encounter in Scripture, he always had a heart for people who were hurting, people who were in pain, people who were, no one wanted to be around. Jesus always <laughs> went straight to them. We were not created to do life alone. We were created to share each other's burdens. And our number one need for many people struggling with their mental health and also their families, the number one need is this, to know that they are not alone. It is so powerful when someone can look you in the eye and say, me too. Me too. I struggle too. And this is so much more than being a good person. I care far less whether you're a good person. I care more, so much more that you are a faithful Jesus follower because our mental health matters. So how do we do mental illness with God? How do we handle our mental health issues with God? Because like it or not, your relationship with God's going to be affected throughout all this. It really is. It, it, because when you're struggling with this emotional pain, I mean, sometimes you get caught in your own thoughts. You get caught in, inside, you know, analyzing everything you did. And is this my fault? Did I do something wrong? You know, is God punishing me? We get, we get caught up in all our regrets because when you act out of that pain, sometimes the things you do aren't great, right? And so how do I handle all that, all this outflow of the things that I'm struggling with? And, and we can think that God doesn't care in the middle of all that. And it's like you're in quicksand sinking and it's hard to reach you. And sometimes it's just easier to give up. You feel me? I know you're out here. It's easier to give up. Don't you dare. Don't you dare give up. You have no idea what kind of wreckage you're going to leave behind. We know. Here's the thing about God. When we're lost in our pain, he's never more present. You know, there's some studies that say spirituality, when you have a spirituality, a spiritual life, that you can feel closer to God when you're struggling with your mental illness. And there's some that are mixed results, and there's some that say they don't have any effect, your spirituality has no effect whatsoever. So it's a mixed bag of tricks. But here's what you need to know when you're struggling, you've got two choices. Two choices. You can back away from God or you can run towards God. We suggest the latter. Run towards God. You need to know one thing, though. And this is from the words of Jesus. It's in the Beatitudes in, in Matthew 5. He says this. He says, Blessed, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God sees you. God knows you're in pain. God knows you are mourning the loss of, of your, your ability to control yourself, of your ability for all the bad outcomes that are coming from this. God sees how you are suffering, and God will comfort you. Run towards God. 
And we might think it's like not so spiritual to, to be sad, to, to be sad over. You're allowed to be sad. You are allowed to mourn this. Jesus wept and gave us permission to mourn. We are allowed to mourn this. But you will be blessed in the midst of your mourning if you run to God. We will be comforted. Sometimes all these symptoms just are isolating. They make you feel alone. And in that, sometimes I think you can think God's left you too, and God hasn't. God has not. Remember, you have two choices. You can run towards God or you can run away. You have that freedom to do that. Rest in that fact. God sees your situation. God accepts us all for who we are. You know, King David, he was a hot mess sometimes. If you read all of the story about him, hot mess, all right? And God looked at him and said, you're a man after my own heart. You're allowed to have both in your life. God loves you with your pain, your struggles, your scars, your wounds. God loves you in spite of the things that come out of that sometimes. In spite of the sin, run towards God. God will provide strength and solace for you. And if you, if you need it, the church, this church, I don't care what's happened to you in the past, this church is here for you. Like we said, we're the physical manifestation of an invisible God. This is our job to wrap our arms around you. And we will do it for all we're worth. You are welcome here. You are accepted here. No matter what. Lean into those relationships. Because your mental health matters. Now, today, I'm going to share Holy Communion. You can... What a, beautiful, what a beautiful thing for y'all to be confirmed and then Open share Open up the bread together. side first or it gets ugly, okay? If you didn't get a cup, there's some back on that back table back there by that bucket. The top bucket has some in there if you didn't get one. Yeah. You can run back there and grab you one. Some of y'all sneak past us. It is absolutely no mistake the symbology of communion that it represents a body that's been broken and blood that's been poured out, the pain and the grief and the loss, the brokenness. These symbols have been passed down to us by Christ. When he sat with his disciples on the night before, he was to pay a price and they were to suffer loss. And he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat, remember me. And he took the cup and he gave thanks. He said, take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour freely for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink, remember me. Brokenness. Redemption. God is here for you. One thing we're asked to do before we partake, and everyone is welcome here. There's no one that's outside of God's grace. This is for everyone. We're asked to be real with God. Drop the face, drop the church face, and just open up your heart and lay it out before God. He sees it anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you boldly before your throne, broken. We can do both. We can be broken and stand before your wholeness and your holiness be messed up, confused, hurt, mourning, and still stand there and receive your love. You showed us how through your son, Jesus, how to be broken and redeemed at the same time. Father, we thank you for these gifts. Please forgive us where we are failing. Help us get back on our feet and come back before you and your people. We pray this in Jesus' name, who was our son. Amen. What a beautiful thing to claim the name Christian and then be able to share in Holy Communion with your new brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. Each and every week at Heritage, we have some next steps. These are steps that we take to grow in our faith. 
Um, this week, these are on your back of your connection card, and they're on the screen behind me as well. And we, we want you to be aware of your mental health. A lot of times we just try to push stuff off, and we push stuff off, and, you know, we, we would get a physical every year, but we don't stay in touch so well with how we're doing emotionally and mentally. And so one of them is, is I'll track my moods this week in an effort to be more aware of my mental health. And then every day I'll pray to God about my feelings and ask Him to help me understand my feelings, to learn from my reactions and see situations as God sees them. A lot of us, we never even pray about our mental health. But God is there. God is always with us. And so whether we need to get professional help, whether we need to continue to pray, whether we need to tell somebody whatever we need to do, we need to keep the door open, as Michael said. We don't need to move away from God. We need to move toward God. And maybe you wondered in here this morning, you've not yet begun a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want you to know that there was a long time in our lives where we did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ over 30 years when we did not know who Christ was. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to know every Bible verse. If you have just a sliver of faith and you want a new and a real and abundant life, you don't have to clean everything up and be perfect. You don't have to do that. Jesus will come into your life and he will pour that grace that we learned about together, right? Because right now, whether you know it or not, whether you've said yes to Jesus or not, his grace is already at work in your life. And when you say yes, God justifies you. He makes us right with God. And then God continues to sanctify you and make you more and more like Jesus each and every day. You don't have to have it all figured out. It's a journey. It's a journey with God. It's a journey of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to be baptized, we can help you with that. As we said, we've got a couple of baptisms that we're rescheduling. We're going to do some next week. So if God's moving your heart, we would love to help you with that as well. And then um, each and every week, as part of our worship, we always do an offering. There are four ways you can give. They're on the screen behind me. We thank you for your financial faithfulness. If you're our guest here this morning, please, please don't feel obligated to give toward our mission. This, is, this, is, this, get our, this service was our gift to you. The people of this church faithfully support the mission that we have to go out and reach the world for the name of Jesus Christ and to love big as Jesus told us to do. This week in the United Methodist Church, they finally had a big meeting they were supposed to have in 2020, and it wasn't able to happen because what happened in 2020? And so a lot of things uh, came out of that, and um, if you'd like some information about that, you can just write it on your connection card or send us an email. We'd be glad to tell you all the stuff that happened in that. But at the end of the day, here's the deal. Heritage Church, we're just going to keep loving big like we've been doing the whole time we've been here. We'll just keep doing what Jesus has called us to do in our community. But if you do have any questions, please let us know. We'd love to send you something, give you some more information if you need it. And then finally, as we get ready to close our service today, and we have our new confirmation kids, I'm going to send you guys out, and you can go out into the lobby, and people are going to shake your hand and say, welcome to the family. So just go out there and make you a little line on the way out the door. You can come back and get your stuff. Just go get it. Let's go on. Bye. Y'all tell them bye. Y'all go on. And as they go out today, my hope is that you all just stop and say, yay for you for taking that big step of faith. Stand where we stand. Matt will help you. Matt's back there. He'll help you out. Maybe. Yeah, he'll help you. But then we want to always ask ourselves, because we are the body of Christ. When we walk out the doors, who's the church? You're the church. I'm the church, right? So who are you investing in? Who in your life needs somebody to see them? Who are you inviting into your life? Who are you including in your life? We need people. We all need people. So are we willing to do those things to share the love of Jesus Christ with the world in desperate need of it? All this might seem really scary sometimes. It's a little unusual, a little weird, and you don't know how to, how to be in the midst of this. Just be real. Be real. That's the best bet here. Just be real. Be authentic. And if you're struggling, we are here for you. We are here for you. Let us know. Let us know. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We come to you just thinking about the symbology of your son, how he was broken and yet he was redemption at the same time. Father, we take that into us. We take that lesson that we can be both, that we can be saved and not yet whole, but we know you are and you are pulling us forward. And even when our faith is flagging, your faith never does. So bring us before you time and time again for healing, for comfort, for the love that passes all understanding. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.